My name is Al. Uh, I work for ESRI or ESRI in California, and I'm a developer at the OpenStreetMap implementation of it. Let me tell you a little bit more about what um, RGIS for OpenStreetMap is. Um, we released that last year at OpenStreetMap, the state of the map in Spain, Girona. Um, <clears throat> the first version was only to be with a desktop. You now and all the GIS editors out there can edit OpenStreetMap using RGS tools, RGS desktop. And as well, they can import RGIS data and upload it into OpenStreetMap in just without moving from the, the desktop implementation. Uh, pretty much it looks like uh, the picture that you see. I will show it to you in a screenshot and also I will show you something new that we created for this release. Uh, it's a pretty simple idea of you download and extend from OpenStreetMap. You can use all the editing experience that you have um, something that I'm actually very curious is how many people have used RGIS desktop in this room? That's good to know. That's very good to know. Um, <clears throat> so using that tool, you'll be able to uh, download and extend, make any edits that you want, and then upload it back to OpenStreetMap with all the attributes and everything else using the extended and advanced editing capabilities as parallel or buffers or a snapping. So today, we, this week, we are releasing the version 2.0, the alpha version only, um, with installer, but it's not a complete release. We still have a long way to go until the final release. This release, um, you can download it. It's open source completely. Um, you can download it from that URL. Um, <clears throat> this release uh, includes RGIS server. Anybody uh, has used RGIS server in this room? Fewer people. Um, RGIS server is, allows you to um, publish a map service, a web service that will allow you to consume it in any technology that you want. It gives you a REST endpoint for everything. Uh, you can uh, edit with a Flex Viewer, Flex, Silverlight, the desktop, JavaScript, iOS, Android, Windows Phone 7, whatever uh, you want, because the center of it is just a database. Um, this is a much uh, better picture of that. Uh, anybody consuming from the cloud, what we'll be talking to, we call it a feature service. It's a web service with a REST endpoint that you can edit. Okay. This is uh, a slide that I love. Yeah. It's, I could talk <laughs> about this slide, but I just like it so much. The way that you can, from any extent, all move it into a, a, a geospatial database, and then any editor that understands that REST endpoint can edit any, pl any place of the world. Um, you can edit um, in the geospatial database and then upload it to OpenStreetMap if you're willing to do so. It's free to use, of course, and uh, free to give. The improvements that we have done in this version of 2.0 we enhance uh, the performance. The first version, we had uh, a few feedback from the community saying that the performance of grabbing all the extent and making the conversion to the geospatial database to create from the nodes, weights, and relations to create point lines and polygons, it was uh, a little too slow for editing. So we made uh, a few changes to improve much more. We know that we're going to still improve it quite a lot. We also, now that we have uh, just a map service, anybody can edit that extent with a mobile device uh, with our o iOS uh, SDK. It is a very simple to do routing and to be able to, as well, do polygons. Um, and also allows anybody that has any knowledge or any developer uh, to have any knowledge of the SDK, now they can also work uh, just using the REST API. Let's demo. <clears throat> For the desktop demo, um, 
I made the screenshots because I was trying to use uh, a geospatial database that was in Redlands, California, and the, the, the internet here is no the fastest one to go to California. So this is how RGS uh, desktop looks like. Uh, um, pretty simple, you have all the layers, you have OpenStreetMap at the end, and the vector data that you downloaded. Um, the simple tools to download it, you just select an extent that you want, and then you point it to your geospatial database. You say, I want to put all my data in this database, SQL, Oracle, uh, GIS, anything that you have. You select the name, and then uh, it will symbolize for you, and it will create a template that then you can just drag and drop whatever you want to with all your uh, features. To upload, it's exactly the same thing. You connect to the geospatial database. It detects the changes that you made. You put your username and password for OpenStreetMap, and it will upload all back uh, to OpenStreetMap. Um, this is where all the source code is. We are asking um, for volunteers to contribute uh, on the source or in the documentation or in the testing. Uh, more for 2.0 will be a great idea. So anybody that wants to sign up and become a developer in this project, we actually uh, appreciate it. Just um, go there and ask for, to contribute, and it will send us an email, and then we'll accept it. And, yeah. Even if you're not a contributor, of course, you can download all the source code and fork it and do your own thing. Or uh, if you find a bug, please um, send it to me, not to my boss. Now you can send an issue and make sure that we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. Or if you fix the bug, we'll appreciate it. Um, RGS Server 10. <laughs> so this is a new release this week. Uh, is it still on alpha version? Uh, is all HTML5 website that allows you to explore an, an open stream map. But instead of showing you why I don't actually go into the browser and we'll see it. So. This is, this is the application. So in this case, um, I was looking around here. This is Riverside, California. Um, I've been mapping pools um, from the neighbors. My kids want to know who their friends should be, and I always told them that um, if they get friends with swimming pools, they will have a better summer. Um, I'm too cheap to get a swimming pool. Um, as you can see, there is quite a lot of data uh, of swimming pools around my neighborhood. Let's do a quick I'll go here, and I will give a name. Um, ah. Having a mouse that always goes back is a little test um, street. There you go. Now we also put a few templates that you can change. Uh, the templates will tell them when you download anything, how you want to be symbolized. We used um, the minimal and emergency. Uh, you can change it and add whatever you want. Emergency is really good because it gives you uh, the things that you want, the hospitals and uh, things that are being used for emergency. If you wish to synchronize with uh, OpenStreetMap, you put your credentials here, and it will do that for you. Otherwise, it will never synchronize to OpenStreetMap every single time that you change. Uh, so you pre create, and it will go download it, and it will take uh, one minute and 30 seconds. Um, in order to make it faster, I actually did it already. You can see that it will show you uh, this is the download complete. It will show you, of course, uh, the features included. And it will tell you where other people can connect. This is the feature service. You give that link to somebody, and it's a REST API that they can do anything that they want to with any technology. And then, of course, you can edit with the cloud, or you can edit with uh, feature services. I already I could call it like that. And this is the JavaScript. Um, uh, SDK, and you can see the background. 
And then those are the features that you can edit. You can make them bigger, of course. Uh, you have all the power to do any changes that you want. Every single time that you change, it sends it back and you put them in the geospatial database. And if you select it to be able to synchronize with OpenStreetMap, it will go back to OpenStreetMap. Um, something that you can do, you can put stops, signs. Sorry, the mouse is killing me. I'm pushing this computer. I hope that nobody minds. Um, you go here, and you can put a stop sign, and you can uh, say, if there's no stop sign, of course, you can change it um, with a simple one. Um, looks like this one has been different. It's a house. You can change it to yes, and it will change the color. Because remember that the house and yes is a different thing in OpenStreetMap. Um, if I don't want my uh, kids to be friends with uh, some of the neighbors, I could delete the swimming pool. Uh, and I know that they will not become friends. There are things that were like that. In something very interesting, of course, is when there's new roads, uh, you can go and I'm looking for, for the time. I'm not just, there you go. I'm in perfect timing. Uh, you can put the new road. You can say this road is actually, there's a road here. I promise you it will not synchronize with OpenStreetMap. It's just for testing. I'm going to put through this house. I don't like those neighbors. Um, and it will create the road. And then you can, of course, say it was residential, et cetera. Uh, if you made a mistake, uh, using the editing of the web, of course, you can make any changes that you want. You can move it any way that you want. Every single time that you click, it goes back to the geospatial database and all that. Very simple editing. Uh, you can do JavaScript, Silverlight, uh, Flex, iOS, whatever you prefer. In the iOS, the editing of the polygons is very simple and interesting. And who drives the features that you can edit is the map service itself. Okay, just to show another sample, um, I downloaded a, a, a big road that people have been trying to fix for a while. I saw a lot of edits. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of points that you can modify. Um, and it's a much better experience. I'm just trying to show that. <clears throat> and this is how everything looks like. Every single time that you create it, uh, an emergency or an extent, it will put it in a nice list for you. And you'll be able to edit any data. Riverside schools, uh, some people have been doing, oh, Israel. Uh, the test that I created. Uh, and you, of course, can change to synchronize back with uh, OSM or, of course, just edit the data. If you remove them, it will remove the map service and nobody will see it. So in an emergency par, if uh, the emergency is over, normally they remove it and the map service goes away for everybody. All the synchronizations, of course, will be saved in OpenStreetMap if they choose to do so. Right. You see, my demo was not as boring. Uh, there you go. Let's go back. I had those ready for if I made any mistakes. <clears throat> the map service, if anybody's seen a, a Nesri map service with the REST API um, that we send it to OGC to be compliant, um, you can edit point lines and polygons uh, in a very simple way. Um, many people know the, the REST API the specifications is a document that's open to anybody to download, and any developer can uh, develop any code against it. Um, it's a very simple one of uh, using JSON strings for point lines and polygons and geometries. So if you got a URL, you can just go and edit anything that you want to. Um, the default editor. and. <coughs> This is where uh, it's in Coplex, and I really encourage you as the OpenStreet map community to help us out a little bit, understanding more. Um, I've been one year learning as much as I can about OpenStreet map. I will really ask for help to understand it more and see what the problems that we may be causing and also some solutions that you may have or uh, questions. You are very welcome to add any issue or open a discussion or send me an email. I will give you my car and you can contact to the team. We are a very small team for the OpenStreetMap. Um, 
And as you can see, I made this screenshot because on Monday at 11.32 Pacific time, I checked in all the code that you saw today. I will really encourage you to download it and uh, start using it from today. Um, it's, a, it's the first version of 2.0, so it has still bugs. Uh, I documented the things that you should <laughs> don't touch it, otherwise it will uh, have uh, problems. Um, you can download the installer if you want of the 1.1. We, we're going to put the installer for the 2.0 that works on the desktop and on the server uh, shortly. But if you want to, if you have RGS server desktop and you want to use the plugin, uh, I will encourage you to download it. It's a stable um, uh, uh, plugin for the RGS desktop. Uh, this is the team, uh, the developers. Um, uh, the, the most handsome person is me, as uh, you can see. Um, we have a lot of followers, and uh, we really want you to uh, contribute and become one of the developers as well here uh, and help us out. Uh, and this is pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you all. Uh, are there any questions? Down there? Wait for the, wait for the microphone, please. Yeah, because I'm too lazy to repeat them. Uh, just a short question. Is it a standalone editor or should it be used with ArcGIS uh, desktop software? Okay, so there's, no li there's a public license. You do not have to use it with ArcGIS desktop or server. You can use it. You can fork it and use it with the public Microsoft public license. is the best one. Um, of course, there's more. Uh, there's a lot of coding that plugs in into RGIS, and you have to rewrite that for whatever purpose you want. But you are free to use it for anything that you would like. The yeah, the license is a Microsoft open license. Uh, the OpenStreetMap RGIS plugin but not the RGS desktop. The RGS desktop is a commercial application. There's a question over there. Oh, sorry. It's an extension of the, the previous question. Uh, so is it a client that we have to install on the computer, or we can use it from RGS online just uh, from a web browser? I'm, I'm a bit confused. Um, so when you install, uh, you have to install it and install it into your computer. And then when you install it into your computer, you, you can actually, it's a website or it's also a desktop tool. There's two parts of it. Um, in that case, it's no RGS online. Uh, we have one version for demoing that mm -hmm. you can, you very welcome to use if you want to test it. It's there, um, the URL, I show that. Uh, but if you want to use it for on your public cloud or your computer, uh, if you have server, it will install there. Uh, if you have desktop, it will install there too. If you don't have anything, you have to use the source code and create something for yourself. Okay, thank you. One, one question in the back, and that's the last one then. So, oh. so, uh, this will open up editing to people that aren't used to OpenStreetMap who are used to ArcGIS. Um, do you think there's a danger that they could do things like um, copy from maps that aren't compatible with our license and, or even make editing mistakes because they don't understand the data? And are you doing anything for that? That's actually a fantastic question. I've been asked that all the time. The question is, uh, because RGS desktop allows you to consume um, Bing Maps, uh, allows you to grab a lot of data that is commercial. What happens if you are tracing on top? Where is the license? Um, the idea is uh, the first time that you use it, you'll see a disclaimer saying you do not trace on top of commercial uh, data. Make sure that the data that you have or that you're importing into OpenStreetMap is free to use to OpenStreetMap. Um, that's, we only can give you the warning. Okay, thank you. Thank you.